Yep. Okay. Now, we mentioned this a little bit earlier before, and I don't know if you have more to, to talk on it, but the steel versus wood tipping point. What yep. what what are you referring to there? Like the size of the project, or what's the tipping point you're referring to? Um, so I was talking to uh, Michael about it at Simcoe, and we were looking. We I was doing a comparison with him. Um, he was talking about he's he's standard issue is a is a two by ten joist at twelve inches on center. Yeah. And we we were getting into the discussion about. Um, spans and costs, and the point I brought up to him was, you know, you in a scenario like that, we're using a two by ten. You're getting, I forget what the span is. It's something like sixteen feet or something like that at twelve on center. Yeah. And then if you end up bumping up, let's say you want to do that um, eighteen inch. Or eight, let's say you need to get like an 18 foot span or a 17 foot span out of a joist. Um, now you're looking at, you know, you, you're bumping up to a two by 12 basically if you want to cover that that same span. Right. And I can do, or we can do, or whoever is going to go into steel, you can get a just shy of 20 foot span out of a two by eight steel joist. And the thing I was talking to Michael about is when you hit that sort of that magic threshold in span, you go from, at least in my market, uh, a 20 foot two by 12 is going to run you about 80 bucks somewhere in that ballpark for a, a, a KDAT two by 12. Right. And I was telling Michael this as the same token, I can get that two by eight joist and not only can I get it, you know, I can span further with it, but I can order it at 18 feet versus 20. And that two by eight joist is running me about $2 and 50 some cents a linear foot. So that 18 (laughs) foot steel joist comes in under 50 bucks. Yeah. Where that two by 12 joist is 80 bucks. So that, you know, that 30 bucks of joist savings Suddenly, suddenly I'm buying steel for less than pressure treated. Yeah. So especially on those jobs that require those longer spans, it's quite likely. Yep. So, cause this is a common question and it just popped up here again from RC Reynolds is what's the cost difference between wood and steel. And if I'm reading, if I'm hearing what you're saying correctly, it depends on the job. Like if it's a smaller job, there might be a cost differential. There might be a premium for the steel, but on a bigger job with bigger spans, you might eat that all up and, and come out ahead or at least not any yep. more money. Because what I've heard from at least not more. Yeah, what I've heard from the and you can clarify this more because you're more familiar with it. What I've heard from the decking, or sorry, from the framing companies mostly, or in the mar- in the market is that Trex elevations was they always kind of said it was about four times more than treated lumber. Fortress came out and said ours is only two and a half times the cost of treated lumber. And now you're saying just going light gauge seal is less than that even. So you're closing the gap at the same time as we talked about before with the lumber pricing going up. So it depends, I right. guess, is the answer. But do you have better ratios than that? Um, or does that sound about right for most jobs? Let's say, let's say, say on a, let's not talk about like the twenty foot span monsters. Let's say on an average two hundred and fifty square foot deck. Let's say whatever it's it's twelve by 20, like twenty four or something, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you're still talking. Um, I'm, I don't, again, I'm not sure what linear linear foot cost would be there. Uh, you know, but linear a, a two by a two by eight cold cold roll light gauge steel is about is less than two sixty a linear foot for your structure. And you again, you're ordering that to size, so you don't have the waste factor. Mm-hmm. And I think when we, I think when Michael and I talked about it, it was on a smaller project, you were talking 30, maybe 40 cents a linear foot different from the joist. Yep. So for that, I'd go steal all day long. That like. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, that's not, and part of that is that's not a fair comparison either. Cause yeah, that, that steel joist that I'm buying might cost me 30 cents a linear foot more. 
but I'm not. I don't have to play in that Joyce. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to tape. I don't have. I don't have to tape that Joyce. Um, we do. We if we do cut them, we do. We do an end cut treatment like you would do with wood. Right. But uh, you can buy the the cold galvanizing compound that you use to treat those cuts. Is you can buy you can buy a six pack and it's like four bucks a can. And you can. I mean. You can do like a beer. two thousand square foot thing with with six cans easy. Right. So So yeah. even on the even on the smaller scale jobs, if you're if you're planning and executing well, you're really getting close in cost. Especially again with the light gauge, because now let's say you only need to spend twelve feet, you can bump that down to a six inch light gauge joist and get that span. Right, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so cost is yeah. not. There's a lot of factors. I want to do this it. so bad. Let's not, sell one. <laughs> not just the linear foot cost, but there's a lot of other things that are playing into this. So, but I guess the moral of the story is it's not as much as people fear it might be. So no, no, especially like you were saying, it, if you're looking at the if the branded and marketing steel, I mean, those guys have they've got to pay for that marketing and branding, and yeah, the yeah. light gauge guys don't. Yeah, exactly, and. So if you're not aware of the light gauge possibilities, it's I think it really opens up a lot of avenues for guys that aren't familiar with steel that want to make that transition. Sure. 